Welcoming Shaquille O'Neal to the Hall of Fame are Julius Irving, Alonzo Mourning, Bill Russell, and Isaiah Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, Shaquille O'Neal. I'd love to thank these wonderful gentlemen for bringing me in. The Hall of Fame committee asked me to choose one, but as all the coaches know that have coached me, I'm not good with listening to rules. <laughs> so I picked four. You know, these four have done so much for me. Lonzo Mourning, arch nemesis. Arch nemesis turned great friend. We both entered the league together in 1992 had fierce battles together, so he dunked on me, I dunked on him. Then in 2006, we joined forces together to win his first and my fourth title for the Miami Heat. Thank you, Zoe, couldn't have done it without you. <clears throat> Isaiah Thomas was a man who pulled me aside one day at an All-Star game and explained to me how a team leader was supposed to carry himself. We now work together, uh, we're friends, he's a business mentor. Thank you very much, Mr. Isaiah. Bill Russell, give it up to the greatest big man to ever play the game. When I first met Mr. Russell, we talked for about three hours. We talked about his life, his game, and what he had to endure as a player. I realized then that I should never complain about anything. Mr. Russell, this means a lot to me that you would honor me on this day with your presence. Thank you, sir. And last but not least, Julius Dr. J. Irvin. Hey, I know he's your guy, and yeah, he's your guy, but he's really my guy. I always dreamed of being as good as Dr. J. I used to dream about this man so much that one time he broke into my college dorm room and woke me up. Remember that, Doc? I thought I was dead. I was sleeping, and a good-looking brother man put his hand on my chest. I was like, God? And I was like, Doc, I'm like, Doc, how the hell you get in my room, bro? <clears throat> I dreamed about this man so much, he moved next door to my parents in Orlando. I dreamed about the Doc so much that he answered the phone when I needed basketball advice. And now my idol walked me into the Hall of Fame. Thank you, brother. <clears throat> the great Jim Valvano once said, the greatest gift anyone can give another person is believing in them. So I'd like to start by saying thank you to those who first believed in me. My first thank you goes to my beautiful mother, Lucille O'Neill. <clears throat> we started off alone together in Newark, New Jersey, with you being a single mom. My first recollection was of you fighting with the bus driver because he believed, he refused to believe that a two-year-old could be this big. But I also remember you ultimately convincing him with that right cross, Mama said, knock you out. <laughs> and him holding his hand over his right, right eye, agreeing, saying, yes, ma'am, kids two and under do ride for free. <laughs> I apologize. Though we were alone, family was never too far away. My great-grandmother, Cilla O'Neill, grandmother, Odessa Chambliss, Uncle Roy, Aunt Vivi, Aunt Velma, because of the love and generosity of family, Mom and I always had a place to lay our heads and a place where I was able to have my favorite food, which happens to be everything. <laughs> then one day, while working at City Hall, Mom met the man who would become the biggest male influence in my life, Sergeant Philip Arthur Harrison. <clears throat> my father, Sergeant Philip Harrison, was a disciplinarian. He was firm but fair. It was my first exposure on how an effective leader operated. And when I didn't listen, I was introduced to his alter ego, affectionately known as the belt. <laughs> he was a student of the game. It's because of him I was introduced to the game and developed a love for basketball. He realized that I was going to be a big guy. 
So I remember he made me memorize three names and he would quiz me on them. In his eyes, these three guys were gods of the game. Bill Russell, give it up. <laughs> Wilt Chamberlain. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And Bill, again, I'm honored that you was able to walk me in. And I know that Will and my father are in heaven, smiling down upon us. And if I know my father, he's up there arguing with Will Chamberlain right now, trying to convince Will that his son is the most dominant big man to ever play the game. <laughs> my, first, my first exposure to leadership was when I was given babysitting duties while mom and dad worked and having to corral my brothers and sisters. In a way, this is where I led my first corporation. My sister Latifa was my VP of dishes. My sister Aisha was the chief operating officer of bed making. And my brother Jamal was my director of leaves. They would always report to me as I would be in deep thought, eating bologna sandwiches and frosted flakes and watching General Hospital. Luke and Laura forever, by the way. But seriously, guys, love you. Thanks for always being there and being part of this enjoyable ride. I can remember the day that gave me great anxiety it was when we left Newark, New Jersey, and we ended up in Wild Flicken, West Germany. It was really here that started a series of events that would help create the character known as Shaq. It's important to know that my roots started untraditionally with no fanfare. As a matter of fact, I was cut by my coach freshman and sophomore year. And I thought about giving it up, it could have all ended there, but there were three people who would change the direction of my life. Ford McMurtry. Ford, where are you? White guy back there. <clears throat> Ford McMurtry was my first official coach. We had a travel team similar to AAU. And what I loved about Ford is he saw something in me that others didn't. He gave me the freedom to emulate my favorite player, Dr. J. Yes, people, I was a 6'9 guard. I watched the fish that paid save Pittsburgh 50 times. I knew all his moves. <laughs> Next there is Iceman. No, not George Gervin, but Chris Woodard. Chris, where are you? Stand up, Chris. Chris was a... Thank you. Chris was a 6'7 army base legend. His Gervin-like moves earned him the nickname Ice. When others didn't pick this scrawny 6'9 kid, me, who couldn't play, who couldn't dunk, it was Iceman who would not only pick me, but push me to hone my skills and pers pursue my dream of becoming an NBA player. Thank you, Ice. And last but not least, Daddy Dale Brown. <clears throat> my father came in the house one day and I was sitting on the couch feet stinking, and he just came and threw the paper. Get your ass up. There's a college coach up there. You might get a scholarship. Come listen to him talk. <laughs> I was 6'9", six, 6'10", six, couldn't play. Definitely wasn't going to college. So I, I get up there. But before I go up there, I'm like, you know what? I'm talking to a college coach. Let me, let me go in this dictionary and pull out a big word so I seem smart. <laughs> so the word I cho chose was extremities. So <laughs> Coach Brown is, is, is talking, and, you know, he's... He gets done with the speech, and I go up to him. I say, Coach, hi, my name is Shaquille O'Neal, sir. Can you send me a program to strengthen my lower extremities? <clears throat> and Coach Brown looked at me, and he said, Sure, how long you been in, in, in the Army, soldier? I said, I'm not in the Army. I'm, th I'm only 13. What? <laughs> what? Where's your father? I was like, he's in the sauna. I want to offer you a scholarship right now. And he, he offered me a scholarship on that day. Coach, thank you. <clears throat> but before I made my mark at LSU, my family and I would leave West Germany and move to San Antonio, Texas, where I would attend high school. It was here where I was given my first nickname. Coach Joel Smith and Dave Maduro would lovingly refer to me as Big Old Some Bitch. They would find, <laughs> true story, they would find unique and wonderful ways to express their love. 
For example, coach, I need some shoes. I can't afford no size 18, you big old son of a bitch. <laughs> coach, what time is the game? I don't know, but you big old son of a bitch, you better get 40 points and 22 rebounds. And when we won the state title in 1989 with an impressive 36-0 record, they both called me and said, you big old son of a bitch, we love you. I knew you can do it, big old son of a bitch. I actually thought my name was big old son of a bitch. I can remember one time the announcers, 7-1 from San Antonio, Texas, Shaquille O'Neal. That's a big son of a bitch. That's a big old son of a bitch right there. <laughs> Excuse my language, children. <laughs> it's also here where I realize the cliche is true. There is no I in team. Couldn't have done it without Doug and Dan Sandberg, Joe Cavalero, Darren Matthew, Rob Dunn, Eric Baker, Dwayne Cyrus, just to name a few. And then it was time for college. And as I mentioned before, I didn't choose LSU. LSU chose me. There was no way I was letting down Coach Brown. But once again, it was time to eat a big slice of humble pie. As I played behind two of the greatest players ever to grace LSU history, Chris Jackson, Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, and Stanley Roberts. <clears throat> These guys set the bar high. I knew what I had to do to get to that level. It's funny, but one of my motivations was to hear what Dick Vitale would have to say about me. And that day would happen, December 1990, LSU versus Arizona. Dick Vitale comes in the locker room and gives a scintillating speech. I don't know what scintillating means. He uses it, so I'm going to use it. <laughs> Versus Arizona, gives us a speech, and then he pulls me to the side and says, Shaq, they got Chris Mills, they got Brian Williams, they got Sean Rooks, they're ranked number two. You might not win, but have a good game. And in my mind, I'm saying to myself, thanks, Dick. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dick. But it was at that moment where I realized I could create my own destiny. And thanks to Mr. Vitell, I ended up with 28 points, 19 rebounds, and I don't think he realized how much he motivated me and pissed me off at the same time. <laughs> I do want to thank the people in Louisiana, Mr. and Mrs. Mallet, Pooney and Dane, Gino, my favorite restaurant, Webb's Barbershop, Sean and Bud Connors, and the rest of the family. Because I heard Mr. Vitell say that when Shaquille O'Neal decides to leave LSU, he will be the number one pick. It made me comfortable in trying my luck in the NBA. I'd like to thank the DeVos family and Orlando Magic for drafting me in 1992. <clears throat> I'd like to thank Dennis Scott, who showed me what it was to be a professional. <clears throat> I'd like to thank Penny Hardaway. We had some impressive years together. I'd like to thank Nick Anderson for missing those four free throws in a row in my first NBA Finals. I'm just playing, Nick, but when I was writing this speech, I was like, you know what? It'll be pretty funny if a terrible free throw shooter criticized a bad one. <clears throat> and then I said to myself, damn, I should have listened to Rick Berry. <laughs> but then I also said to myself, you know what? I'd rather be a terrible free throw shooter that in about 15 minutes will be in the Hall of Fame. So Rick, thanks, but no thanks. Too damn big to be shooting underhanded. After Orlando, I ended up in LA. <clears throat> Kazam 2 was not yet in production. But what was in production was the beginning of a new Laker dynasty. First few years were not easy, filled with trials and tribulations. But Jerry West and the Buss family and their objective of rebuilding a dynasty knew exactly what to do. Bring in the Zen master, Phil Jackson. <clears throat> Many may not know this, but Phil always made us meditate in a room filled with sage. Scotty knows what I'm talking about. Now, I don't know what sage is, but I know what it smells like. So one day I'm, I'm sitting in a room, me, GP, and Kobe, 
I've never been high before, but if this is high, I think I was it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sitting there and finally have a conversation with Phil. I said, Phil, come on now. And Phil says, it's not, it's the cousin of cannabis. <laughs> so I said, okay, Phil, whatever that means. <laughs> so starting today, Phil and I will be opening medicinal sage dispensaries all across the U.S. <laughs> I'd like to thank Big Shot Bob, Brian Shaw, Rick Fox, Horace Grant, Ty Tyron Liu, Devin George, Gary Vitti, Mike Pemberthy, Dale Harris, Miss Rambus, Miss Buss, and last but not least, the great Kobe Bryant, a guy that would push me. Kobe Bryant, a guy that would push me and help me win three titles in a row. He would also help me get pushed off the team and traded to Miami. <laughs> but it was in Miami where two of my favorite people helped me obtain my fourth championship, Pat Riley and D. Wade. But I'd be remiss if I didn't name other key players. James Posey, Jason Williams, Antoine Walker, Hall of Famer Gary Payton. Stand up, Gary. <clears throat> Udonis Haslam and Hall of Famer Alonzo Mourning. <clears throat> Miami Beach will always be one of my favorite cities. I'd like to thank the Arison family. Miami Beach PD, Doral Police Department, Mato Ramos, Steve and Henry, Prime 112, Dr. Cop, and Barry University. Then after Miami, I played in Phoenix. I'd like to thank Steve Kerr. He was the first general manager to actually call me and say I was being traded. All the other times I found out because of loud ass Stephen A. Smith on ESPN. <laughs> I'd like to thank Mike D'Antoni, Steve Nash, Mari Stoudemire, Phoenix training staff, and my neighbor in Florida, Grant Hill. After Phoenix, I played with the King in Cleveland. After that, I went to Boston and played with three future Hall of Famers. Paul the Truth Pierce. Kevin Big Ticket Garnett. And one of the greatest shooters of all time, Ray Allen. So it's been quite a career. And nowadays what motivates me is applying the life lessons that I learned from my parents so long ago. I learned to be giving. Happy to say that my mom and I are, are, are approaching our 25th year of Shaka Claus. If you don't know what Shaka Claus is, I put on a Santa Claus thing and I go around and I pass out toys. Thank you. <clears throat> Happy to say my mom and I, we are approaching our 25th year of Shaq's Giving. So we go to homeless shelters and feed them what we would eat on, on Thanksgiving. <clears throat> you know, Gary, fried chicken, macaroni, throw some cornbread on that thing, <laughs> some iced tea, some collard greens. Happy to say that I, I built the state-of-art movie theaters in low-income area where I was born and raised in Milton, New Jersey. <clears throat> I also learned to work hard, but not to take myself too seriously. Like sitting in a Buick, I knew I couldn't fit in. <laughs> hey, they paid me three million dollars. What you want me to say, no? <laughs> Yeah, there was like three men. I was like, I fit, I fit. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I've done my best to be a good role model to the youth and to those who would look up to me. My message to the youth has always been the same. Never give up, work hard, and continue to learn. Not only do I talk the talk, I try and walk the walk. I left LSU in 1992. 2000, I received my bachelor's, so my mom said she was going to whip me. <laughs> Mama had an alter ego, too, and the name was Bigger Belt. 
In 2004, I received my MBA. In 2012, I received my doctorate in education. <clears throat> Speaking of the youth, I have six wonderful children. <clears throat> Three daughters. My oldest, Tahira. Stand up, baby. Stand up. <clears throat> this is my oldest, Tahira. She doesn't know this yet, but after she graduates from college, she will be attending law school. <laughs> Amira, me and me, stand up, baby. <clears throat> Amira, who loves volleyball and basketball, I think you should choose LSU. Your daddy knows some people, I can make a call for you. <laughs> when I go to Mimi's volleyball games, the parents hate me because I'll be telling them, spike it in their face, baby. <laughs> I want all this bloody right here, spike it in their face. Uh. Love you, Mimi. My youngest baby, Miara, stand up, baby. I don't like to put pressure on my babies, but she works out with, with my sons, and I, I think it's fair to say one day if she continues, Miara will probably be the best women's basketball player ever. She's that good. Then I have three boys. Miles, stand up. <clears throat> Miles doesn't know this, but after college, he will also be attending law school. <laughs> yes, you are. Already paid for it, cuz. Already paid for it. <clears throat> then there's Sharif. Stand up, Sharif. <clears throat> My son Sharif is already one of the top high school juniors in the country, and I hope to see you up here one day, son. And last but not least, my twin, Shakir O'Neal. Stand up, Shakir. If you ever want to know how bad I was as a little kid, you need to meet Shakir. Damn, he bad. We had a conference a couple weeks ago at a school, and the principal was complaining, and I just started laughing. And he was like, Miss O'Neill, is it funny? I was like, no, it's me. <laughs> I've seen him before. It's me. <laughs> but Shakir is also a fabulous little player, and son, I hope to see you up here as well. My kids are the best kids in the world because they understood that in daddy's line of work, I couldn't make many PTA meetings. I missed some birthdays. I miss some Christmases. I miss some school plays. I'd like to thank Arnetta and Shawnee for being wonderful mothers. Stand up, please, baby. Stand up. You guys, you guys have done a perfect job. Thank you. But there's two things my kids always knew. One, not to disturb daddy during nap time on game day. And they knew that daddy's love for them is unconditional. And it still is and forever will always be. Love you guys. I'd like to thank the fans, mothers and daughters, fathers and sons. Every time you rooted on us, please know I heard you. Especially when I missed free throws. Shaq, bend your knees. Shaq, concentrate. Shaq, play defense. <laughs> Shut up. <clears throat> I found so much inspiration looking into your faces. You guys were a part of every win. Thank you for being such a big part of our league. Appreciate you very much. Give yourself a round of applause. <clears throat> Got to thank the commissioners, two best commissioners in sports, David Stern and Adam Silver. Stand up, guys. Are you here? David and Adam, stand up. David's not here. These guys have taken NBA to heights that none of us could have imagined, and they've done it with integrity, 
I'm proud of my relationship with them. And David, even though you suspended me 10 times, hold on to the amount of $4.2 million. I still love you, David. <laughs> but if you want to write the check, I'll take it. <laughs> Tax-free, please. And lastly, I have to acknowledge the people that have been particularly influential in my life. My first agent, Leonard Armado, who taught me how to maximize my potential. Thank you, Leonard. <clears throat> my uncle, Mike Parrish. My uncle, Jerome. For those who don't know Jerome, Jerome was always the guy sitting behind me on the bench eating popcorn. <laughs> Smacking me around, bossing me around. Thanks, Uncle Jerome. I'd like to thank Lester Nispel, my business manager. My father couldn't be here with us tonight, but I left the seat empty for him. And uh, I know he's, he's watching, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you guys for everything. Today is a great day, a day of honor, humility, great sacrifice, and resolve to keep on keeping on. I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame committee. I'd like to congratulate the other Hall of Famers. AI, you was a bad boy. You was. <laughs> Two quick stories. You know I like to touch guards up when they come in the lane. It's no secret. I'm going to put them on their ass. I didn't know that. So the first time we played AI, I told Gary, I said, let him go baseline. I'm going to touch him up. I touched him up. He came back the next five times. So it got to be a point where we started playing chess. If I touch him up too many times, I'm going to be sitting over there next to Sage smoking Phil. <laughs> and he'll take over the game, or I just have to let him go. So I let him go. Congratulations, AI. Yao Ming. <clears throat> Yao Ming was the first to block my shot three times in a row. And people like to say he's 7'7", but he's really like my favorite convenience store, 7-Eleven. <laughs> he was a great player. And he tricked me. Three years, I never spoke to Yaws. I thought it was a language barrier there. And then one game, he hit me with a Kim Olajuwon, bing, bing, fade away. And I, I said, hey, y'all, nice move. And he said, thanks, my brother. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. You speak English? He's like, Shaq, you never talk to me. Of course I speak English. <laughs> Damn. I'd like to thank David Levy and the Turner family for giving me this great life after basketball. <clears throat> it's a true honor to be a part of this great fraternity. At the age of 10, my father says, son, if you listen to me, he told me this day would happen. And hopefully when a father's quizzing his son on great big men of the game, hopefully Shaquille O'Neal's name will be in the answer. Thank you very much for attending tonight's ceremony. <clears throat> Just want to say, Shalom, Avida Sain, Alex, how you say bye in Spanish? Adios. <laughs> Salam alaikum. And peace. Love you guys very much. Thank you. <laughs>